Hello and welcome to Frost Over the World. At the end of an extraordinary week, the world has a new champion. He's young, he's gifted, and he's black. His name is, of course, Lewis Hamilton. We'll be hearing from the Formula One star later. But that's after we've discussed the other champion this week, US President-elect Barack Obama. We'll also take a look at the situation in the Congo, the breakdown of the truce between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and the countdown to the Israeli general election. And we chat with the diminutive but hugely talented Hollywood actor, Danny DeVito. But we start with the Congo. Five years after the end of a devastating civil war, the Democratic Republic of Congo is once again falling into chaos. Last week, 50,000 people fled their homes in the east of the Congo following intense fighting between rebel, rebel leader General Nkunda and the government forces. General Nkunda says he's fighting to protect Tutsis from armed Hutu groups. That's, a, that's his claim, some of whom were involved in the 1994 Rwandan genocide. Today, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is meeting with African leaders in Nairobi to try to resolve the crisis. In fact, they're meeting right now, and I'm delighted to say that the Foreign Minister of Rwanda, Rosemary Musa Manali, has in fact come out of those sessions to talk to us right now. How is the atmosphere uh, today? Do you think there will be progress? There's been an opening session, but obviously everything negotiation-wise lies ahead. Do you think there'll be progress? Well, we always like to hope that there will be progress. Uh, the presidents have been meeting since morning. They had a consultative meeting. And uh, right now we've just had an opening session. And after that opening session, there's a short recess. And after that short recess, we should be able to get back and listen to the conclusions of their consultations in the morning. So we really hope that uh, we'll be able to have progress. But uh, having said that, I believe progress will just have to be based on the will of those involved and especially the DRC government, because that's where all these rebels are, ba are based. That's where you find that they are being supported, they are being integrated in the forces. Uh, and indeed, we must deal with the central point, the central, uh, uh, the central culprit who are the FDLR. These are the genocide uh, forces that committed genocide in Rwanda and after that ran into the Congo. These are the pivot really, these are the center of solving this problem. And today as I talk, these are now integrated in the Congolese forces. So I hope that what has been concluded today will help uh, the Congolese government to have the resolve, to have the will to deal with the issue, with this issue once and for all. And, and what about um General Nakunda, um, you, men you mentioned uh, uh, the Hutu rebels, the FDLR, um, but what about General Nakunda? Is he not as much of a problem? Uh, I think General Nakunda, if you look at General Nakunda, even General Nakunda himself is a creation of the Congolese government. If you look at uh, the clashes that they are having, the problems that they are having, the, the differences that they are having, I think those can be solved within a political process, a political process that requires the leadership of the Congolese government. And so uh, whether he's vicious, whether he's, uh, he's uh, uh, negative towards the, 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 the people of the Congo, I think that will need to be looked into by the Congolese themselves. General Nkunda is a Congolese. Uh, the Congolese government needs to deal with those issues of General Nkunda. And what about the people who say that uh, some of the rebels some of the people attacking the government, the, uh, the government of the Congo, uh, have tacit support or links with Rwanda. Is there any truth in that, do you think? That has absolutely no truth in it. That has absolutely no truth in it. Quite the contrary, those militias, those uh, in Terahamwe, the ex file the, the Fideler, who killed people, one million people in Rwanda have gone on to get integrated in the Congolese army. And these are the people that, they, that the Congolese government needs to deal with. They really must galvanize all the backbone and deal with them and use the international community to help, use regional uh, capacities to help, but be able to deal with them. And that requires will, it requires leadership, it requires resolve from the part of the government of Congo. And uh, people, some people say, obviously, that they think that Rwanda would very much like to have 
part of the resources in the east of the Congo, the minerals, etc., um, and and they and and that you as a, a country feel that part of those should be yours. Do you do you think they should? That is absolutely not true. And Rwanda has never, ever claimed to do that. They have never wished to do that. And quite besides that, we have mechanisms that can be able to monitor that. The joint verification mechanisms that exist between Rwanda and the Congo that are now uh, supposed to be active but have not been active because of the lack of will that I've talked about, all those are mechanisms that can be able to resolve that, can be able to verify if Rwanda has any interests in the minerals or anything in the Congo. But these uh, mechanisms have not been allowed to perform. They have not been allowed to achieve what they are supposed to achieve. And indeed, this is because there is actually nothing to verify because Rwanda has never been uh, involved in all this. And President Kabila was saying that, uh, in fact, he was criticizing, yesterday he was quoted here, he was criticizing the UN, uh, the UN forces for not doing more to stop the violence and, and the killing and some killing last night and so on. Um, but from what you're saying, you would say it, you wouldn't blame the UN, uh, Rosemary, you would blame um, the, the DRC, the Congolese government, yes? Uh, why I have been uh, specifically mentioning the Congolese government is because while the UN is responsible, they have to have a base. They have to have partners to work with. So, uh, yes, the UN has its own shortcomings. When they went into the Congo, they had uh, responsibility to protect the people. They had uh, the people there in the Congo. They had responsibility to work with the Congolese government to disarm these people that killed uh, the FDLL, the ex in Terahamwe that killed people in Rwanda and ran into Congo again to kill and continue their, their process of killing. Now, uh, having done that, uh, having gone into the Congo, the Monuk, the, this is the UN uh, army, they should have been able to work with uh, a credible uh, army, this is the Congolese army, to uh, disarm, to help repatriate and get these people out of uh, operation. That has not happened and we are still waiting. So yes, there is a bit of uh, a portion to blame on the Monuk, but there's also a large portion to blame on the Congolese government, because as a government, they should have it as their responsibility. And now, apart from not being able, as they claim, to, to disarm these people, which may be true, they are also willingly using them within their government. And this, within their, their, their army, they are engaged at war, and we think that this is accessing them and giving them uh, ammunition. It's helping them to access the, the means to make war. They are their effective arsenal. So we feel that this must stop and must stop forthwith. So is that the most important? As you think of a f the immediate future in Rwanda and the D DRC, uh, the most Im what's the most important step towards peace, uh, towards lack of killing, that you would like to see come out of today's conference? Well, the first immediate step is to ensure that, uh, as agreed by the, the, the heads of state in their, in their consultations, is to seize the fire. But quite apart from seizing fire is then to galvanize the forces and be able to disarm these FDLR and make them out of service, make them out of operation. So for us, the immediate task is to work on a, pro a program to disarm these FDLR, and then they can go ahead and ensure that they have a ceasefire, they deal with the humanitarian catastrophe that uh, we have been seeing, but also get committed to the many good agreements that have been signed but have not been used. Well, thank you very much. We, we thank you so much for joining us. You, you've uh, laid out the position as you see it so well. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today, Foreign Minister. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. It's a pleasure to be on your program. After the break, we switch to the United States and we'll be joined by former U.S. Secretary of State James Baker and Democratic Congressman Dennis Kucinich uh, to look at the global problems facing U.S. President-elect Barack Obama. Don't, don't go away. Whatever happens, don't go away.